So thank you very much. So uh, last time we talked about uh, letter systems and letter system uniformization on omega-1. And I introduced this new notion of uh, letter system uniformization on trees. So that's what we're going to continue with. I'm going to start with recalling the definitions and stating the, the new theorems. And then we're going to go and prove one uh, new result in detail. Okay. So uh, let's start with, with some really basic definitions. So uh, we had these letter systems. right? Uh, now, I'm only going to use letter systems that are defined everywhere at all uh, limit, uh, countable limit ordinals. Okay, so all letter systems are going to look like this, this lecture. All right, so for each alpha, I have a type omega sequence cofinal in alpha. So a coloring of the letter system is just a sequence of local maps. I'd say with omega many colors, uh, each C, each C alpha has its own function F alpha. Right? And so on. Okay, so these functions F alpha and F beta might uh, disagree on some of their common domains. This is only a finite set. So in some cases we have uniformization. So a uniformization of this uniformization, omega-1 uniformization, was a global map phi defined everywhere in omega-1 such that for each alpha uh, for almost every psi in C alpha the local map agrees with the global one. Right. right, so almost everywhere you see these functions agree. Now, uh, we have this notion of T uniformization. So T going to be a tree of height omega 1 and we're going to be interested in only a few types of trees we're going to be interested in orange shine trees uh, which are trees which have all of one many countable levels but they don't have any uncountable chains okay we're also going to be interested in suslin trees which are orange shine trees that don't even have uncountable anti-chains. And we're going to look at one extra tree, which is denoted usually by sigma q, um, which is just a set of subsets of the rationals, which are well-ordered and well-ordered and bounded, bounded well-ordered subsets of the rationals. Okay, and the, the extension is, is end extension. With end extension. Yes, yeah, so the only thing that stops it from being Ehrenstein is that it has large levels. So a typical level in that tree has size continuum. Uh, it still doesn't have any uncountable uh, chains, right? Because that would give an uncountable, uh, it would give an uncountable subset of the rationals. So it's bad to start with. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, Richard, can you? I pack it. Yes, so yeah, so we're going to be interested in these uh, these trees. And what else did I want to say about this tree? Nothing really. Yes, this is, by the way, a non-special tree. So it cannot be decomposed into countably many anti-chains. So sigma q has no omega-1 chains. 
and non special. There's no way of writing this set as countably many sets which contain which, which are empty chains, so pairwise and comparable elements. So it's it's a large, it's a notion of largeness, you know, uh, being non-special. Yes. So T uniformization, we're gonna look at Arnstein's trees, Suslane trees, and uniformization in this tree. So what does this mean? So again, we're we're still have we're still working with letter systems on omega one. We're still working with the same notion of, of local colorings. And for such a thing, we say that uh, a T uniformization instead of an omega one uniformization. T uniformization is a map phi defined on a subtree S of t, so a map phi s to omega such that uh, s is a subtree by which I mean that it's a downward close subset, downward closed and also pruned. Okay, so this just means that any element in S, uh, for any element in S and any level higher, you can find uh, an element of S on that particular level. I should write this down. So prune means that for any S from height, say, epsilon and any delta above epsilon, there is a T from that level, which extends. You pick a level, pick an element, pick a level above, you can find something which extends. This is what it means to be pruned. Okay, so back to T uniformization. A T uniformization is a map defined on a subtree such that uh, yeah, this is a subtree, and for any limit alpha uh, and in uh, S alpha, for almost every psi in C alpha, if I look at the restriction of S to psi, so the element below S which has height xi, I look at the global function, I get the same value as the local function. So this is the, uh, the picture. You have this large tree T. You have omega 1 and you have the, the ladders. And no matter how you uh, color the ladder, so no matter how you, you define the sequence of local colorings, you can find a subtree this is a large subtree and this global map on S, such that if you look at a limit level and the branch coming down, so this is the branch defined by S, the, at these critical positions given by the ladder, you're gonna see the same pattern, the same values appear. You're going to see the same values appear by phi uh, as the, the values by f alpha. So the important point here is that we don't care about branches that don't have an upper bound at level alpha, right? There are a lot of branches through this tree which don't have an upper bound, right? 
with these trees typically they're they're everywhere branching so you have continuum many branches going through uh, to going up to this level alpha but only countably many of those have an upper bound in in s right and we only care about those okay, so as jonathan said this this remark this really looks like just a this coherent set of approximations to a, a real uniformization on omega one, right? If you if you restrict phi to this branch, you you see a function defined on on alpha, and it uniform uniformizes up there. Okay. Wait, so T is so slow, and then you force a branch into the exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, this pruned assumption just exactly says that the, this gives you the density argument to show that the, the uniformization is defined everywhere. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, do you have at least one such map to the other? This point? No, it's, uh, yeah, this, this might not exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean, you mean the, the T, T uniformization? Yeah. yeah, 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 no, this is the, this is the, yeah, it, it may or may not exist, uh, the same as for, for the usual uniformization. But it's weaker, yeah. Whenever you have a, a uniformization on omega one, you can put it on the tree as well, right? The, the coloring is gonna be defined everywhere on T, and it's only gonna depend on the levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing here is that the coloring it can depend, <clears throat> you know, the actual position in the tree, not just the levels. And even for two branches which do have uh, bound, maybe the agreement with the coloring starts at different places. That's also freedom you have. Right, for every S, for every branch, an agreement starts somewhere. That there's no uniform bound for a certain level, for, for any given level of them. Okay, so I'm gonna state some results which say that under certain assumptions, we have colorings which don't even have these, these weak uniformizations. And then I'm gonna state uh, theorems which say that in some situation you do have uniformizations. And for both, surprisingly, we're gonna use diamonds. This is, this is already, this is in contrast to the, the classical case. So diamonds, usual diamond, it just says that there is a sequence W alpha such that whenever you take a subset of omega one, there is a stationary i such that alpha is an i, then x intersect alpha is w alpha. It's stationary, so this diamond sequence tells you for any subset of omega one, stationary often what that subset is up to that point, okay? And we're gonna use a stronger version as well, diamond plus. So again, it starts similar. There is a sequence, I'm gonna write these script Ws uh, w alpha alpha is then omega one, such that w alpha, they're each countable. Think of them as countable collection of subsets of alpha, such that for any x, now there is a club, closed unbounded set D, such that whenever alpha is in D, or alpha in D implies that both D intersect alpha and X intersect alpha are guessed, are in this countable collection. Okay. So this, this is the situation. In diamond, you stationary often know what the, this, this subset is. You exactly know what it is. In diamond plus, you have something stronger in some sense. You have a club, uh, you have club many alphas where, where you make uh, a good guess 
but you actually have this, but you only know that your subset of the alpha is in this countable collection. Both the subset and the places where you previously guessed right is going to be in W alpha. Okay? And before I state the results, just a piece of notation. So I'm going to write uh, uh, unif uniformization n colors uh, treaty letter system C if for any n coloring of this letter system there is a T uniformization. For any n coloring of C there is a T uniformization. N is going to be, yeah, 2 and omega most of the time. And remember, you can restrict your attention to special colorings to, to cases where all the local colorings are constant. So it could be that the color doesn't really depend which psi you take from, from C, C alpha just on, on alpha. Okay, that, that's also meaningful and, and an interesting case. So I'm going to write C unif for constant uniformization. Any constant or monochromatic coloring, let's say monochromatic, whatever, constant n coloring. So each f alpha is constant. There is a t uniformization. Okay, this is just notation. a good place to ask if there's any questions, if there are any questions. Yep? Uh, what is the cold constructor requirement if D intersects alpha is in W alpha? I think that's the star, star version, the diamond star. Is that? Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, you know, um, Maxwell was nodding, so I'm, I'm more confident now. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm going to give a proof. Uh, from diamond plus, so it's it's interesting how this this thing is used. You know, apart from having more places where you guessed right, you're actually using that you know where you guessed right previously. All right, so non-uniformization results. I'm just going to state these, and we're we're not going to prove any of them. They're not particularly new. I mean, the arguments non-unif results. So recall that CH is enough to uh, sh get you to, to construct a constant two coloring which doesn't have a, an omega one uniformization. This is the, the usual uh, Devlin and Shella thing. Okay? However, what Justin showed is that uh, CH is consistent with all colorings uh, having a T uniformization for our enchant trees. Okay? Now the first uh, thing, the first, or maybe I should write this down. Oh. CH, okay, so this is more. It's consistent that CH holds and um, unif omega colors uh, TC. This is true uh, for any T and for any C. This is Arnshine. Okay, so this is only true for Arnshine trees. Um, yes, but not for Omega One. Now, uh, here is something new uh, CH implies. So the um, first, how about Suslin trees? Um, Suslin trees are somewhere between orange shine and omega one uh, in some sense. And CH actually implies that 
uniformization will fail in the strongest sense for Suslin trees, so even for constant two colorings, it's going to fail for any C and any Suslin. Uh, I'm not sure where this, what I'm posing here. In particular, in this model, there are no Suslin trees. Okay, so this says that under CH for any, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm writing the, the quantifiers in the end. Under CH for any letter system and any Suslin tree, there is a coloring without uniformization. Right? So this is true if I write uh, omega 1 here instead of t as well. And this actually holds for any Suslin tree. It holds for any tree without uncountable antichains. For example, omega 1 is a tree without antichains of size 2. Now. Uh, natural question, can we get the consistency that uniformization fails for, for all Arnstein trees, right? So you try it from CH, it's, it, it's not going to work. You're not going to negate for all Arnstein trees from CH, right, because of this result. So you go one stronger, you try diamond. So diamond implies the following. Uh, that for any Arnstein tree, for any letter system, uh, the general uniformization with two colorings fails. So there is a two coloring, not necessarily monochromatic, which doesn't have a T uniformization. So under the stronger assumption, any iron shine tree, any ladder system, there is not necessarily monochromatic without uniformization. How about monochromatic colorings? Again, from diamond, well, for any iron shine tree, there is a ladder system such that the constant uniformization fails. This is still not exactly what you're aiming for when you want for any iron shine tree and for any letter system this happen, right? This is the strongest failure of uniformization. There is a constant coloring, constant coloring with two colors, so just assigning zeros and ones to limit ordinals. So is it, is it there's constant no. for each ladder, or is it that every ladder has the same it, No, it's constant for each ladder separately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what I could prove is that consistently diamond holds, and I'm going to write the strongest failure for any iron shine tree and for any ladder system, the constant uniformization fails with two colors. Mm -hmm. So when I was working on these results, I, I couldn't prove that diamond implies the strongest failure, but I could show that there is a model where diamond holds, and also I have this very strong failure of uniformization. Right, so this is also a model of CH, diamond implies CH, so you have these two extremes. You have a model of CH where for any iron shine tree and any ladder system, you have the uniformization, the strongest form of uniformization you can have. And this is also a model of CH, where you have the strongest failure of uniformization. Uniformization fails for any iron shine tree and for any ladder system in the strongest form. So these are very, very different models of, of CH.
Maybe you already said this, but there's no dependence on the choice of ladder system. Did you say that? Um, well, here there is, like right? Here there is. So here I'm saying that it doesn't matter which orange shrine tree you choose, doesn't matter which ladder system, you have a two coloring without uniformization. The C is denoting the ladder system. You are quantifying. Yes, yes. And here, when I want uh, a two coloring, yeah. sorry, a constant coloring without uniformization, yeah. I need to choose the ladder for the proof to go through. Yeah, my my weakness in yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So uh, you you can actually this this is sharp. So that's what I'm gonna show you. The diamond doesn't imply the you know quantifying over yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. So let me give a hint. This is a uh, how do I get this model? I what I do is I add all of too many Cohen subsets to omega one. Uh, so I'll have one Cohen, Cohen subset. So uh, this is a sigma closed forcing, so it actually forces diamond and CH and everything, no matter what model you start with. But diamond plus fails in this model. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this here, add all of two Cohen subsets to so this is sort of the classical model where diamond holds, but diamond plus fails. Diamond holds, but diamond plus fails. The thing is that you're generically adding these stationary, co-stationary subsets, so you're not going to be able to guess on clubs. Probably even that is going to fail. Yeah. Okay, so we, we have this series of results, and, and the proofs are, are really the standard uniformization proofs adapted to, to trees. Stronger and stronger assumptions, stronger and stronger guessing principles give you the stronger and stronger non-uniformization results. The funny thing is that from diamond plus, you can prove a positive uniformization result too. for diamond plus implies that whenever somebody hands you a letter system, you can construct an orange shine tree in this sigma q such that constant uniformization holds for this tree and this letter. Any constant omega coloring will have a T uniformization. Any constant omega coloring of this particular letter will have a T uniformization. Right, so it, this, is, this is pretty funny because you can apply the, the first diamond result for this tree and this ladder system, and you get a non-uniformizable two coloring. The, the colorings will be not non-constant on, on the ladders, right? So that's what makes the coloring non-uniformizable in this case, because if the colorings are constant in each ladder, then by this, you have the uniformization. Right, so any constant coloring can be uniformized, but there are non-uniformizable colorings in general. So there's really a difference it shows then in between these two things as well. Uh, 
Okay, um, there is a variation of this result if you um, don't require T to sit inside here. Um, actually, I can make this tree special if you like. So we can make T special or ensure that uh, any coloring, constant coloring, has a uniformization on a Suslin subtree. On a Suslin subtree. Right, I cannot make the tree itself Suslin by the first result. When, whenever CH holds, I have this strong failure of uniformization for any Suslin tree. But I can make the subtrees, the, the subtrees witnessing the uniformization so slim. Uh, what I don't know how to do, and I put this here as a question, uh, can we make T almost so slim? And, and almost so slim means that there are no stationary empty chains. So this is something that I don't know how to do. Exactly. So whenever almost so slim would mean that whenever you have an empty chain and you look at the corresponding levels, that's a non-stationary set. I think there's a Christmas party outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, sorry, why is uh, why is that non-special? I I don't have a short argument for that. Yeah, it's uh, that there's enough space to do these diagonalization arguments and fusion arguments. So we're we're gonna see something similar uh, in in the in the proof that you know uh, you can have these uh, you can construct easily these fusion sequences inside, which allow you to prove that it's it's not special. But I, I don't have an easy yeah I don't know. And so this is the this is the result that I'm gonna prove, and I'm gonna mention the last thing without proof uh, is the following in ZFC. Sigma Q. Yeah, you can never. Yeah. So for absolutely. So in Sigma Q, yeah. I I said well ordered and bounded. If you also require that it has a maximum, then it becomes special, yeah. right? So there's you just call it exactly you just map to the top. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't require that, it's non-special. Even though it still absolutely has no correspondence. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's it's non-trivially non-special, right? Something is non-special if it has an uncountable chain. Yeah. So yeah, the, the last result is in ZFC, which essentially has that uh, this guy here, sigma Q, has the uniformization property for, for any coloring. And this holds for any C. And this is also true for the smaller uh, special subtree that, where you have maximums. All right, so for any letter system coloring, no matter what letter you start with, uh, there is a subtree uh, of sigma q. There's a, you can select an orange shine or a non-special subtree even if you want. 
where you have a uniformization. And maybe, yeah, maybe this is not so surprising because there's so much space in sigma q that, that you just, yeah, there, there's just so much space inside. You have these uncountable continuum size levels that, that you can just construct these things. Uh, but uh, something that I was surprised with is that there is a single coloring on the large tree that witnesses this. Actually, there is a single H, sort of a master coloring, such that for any letter system coloring of alpha, there is uh, a uh, even a non-special such that H restricted to T uniformizes. Right, typically what happens is that somebody gives you the, the letter system coloring and based on that coloring you construct the uniformization. That's, that's that's the, yeah, that's what you, you'd expect to do. And that's the only thing you can do in Omega 1. But you have so much space in this tree that you can have a single coloring which witnesses the uniformization for all letter system claims. Single global coloring. Are there any questions? So sigma q embeds all the special trees? It's kind of like a status. I mean, it's not special. But... Uh -huh. Yeah, I. Um, all the special. I wish you would said R and shine. No, it can That's why I wish you would say that. In China. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I. I... I mean, it has this very profound reason for not being a branch. Yeah. Special trees have an even more profound reason. You think that maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's that's a good question though. Okay, so what's the plan? I would like to show that result number four up there. Okay, so, so the goal is to construct a, given a fixed uh, ladder system, we'd like to construct an orange shine subtree of this sigma q uh, such that constant uniformization holds. Okay. And uh, not this. I mean, the sigma q part is not surprising. The, this, you know, this is the most classical way of constructing R and shine trees to, to consider subtrees of sigma q. The, the surprising part is that you can ensure that you have uniformization. Okay. So the first thing we should be construct R and shine trees. So I'm very briefly going to do that. I'm going to recall the. The usual orange shine tree construction. So, uh, to prove four, uh, first recall uh, orange shine trees in sigma q. Right, we're going to do something more complicated, so we should be familiar with this first. So, um, yeah, we have this tree of well-ordered subsets of rationals, right? Uh, so each element is just the subset of the rationals. The, the height of an element of, a, of this tree is simply the order type. Okay, so it's fairly easy to imagine these, these elements. Um, what's, the, what's the strategy for constructing an Orenstein tree? Well, you're building its initial segments and at each stage you end extend the tree you have so far right that's how you're building the tree uh, at limit steps 
right? You take the union of the previously constructed things and you want to seal certain branches. You want to put top or you want to put bounds to, to certain cofinal branches, right? Okay, so a cofinal branch corresponds to an increasing sequence of, of subsets of the rationals. Well, it's going to stay well ordered. That's no problem because you're taking these end extensions, but you want to keep it bounded. Okay. So, in order to keep uh, a chain bounded, you want to make sure that you can jump arbitrarily high up in the tree structure. So, in order to standing too far, right? We have these two notions of extension. We have extension in the in two measures of how you extend, right? Or how much you extend. You, you can look at how much the order type increases, and you can look at how much the supremum of these two elements, the subsets of the, the reals, change, right? So S, the extension, uh, we have the height of S and the height of T, right? And we also have the soup as a subset of the reals, soup D. So we want to control these two things simultaneously. We need to control simultaneously. We want to go higher and higher and higher in the tree that we constructed so far. But we want to make sure that this, uh, these, if, that the way these increase is not too fast. Okay. Okay. So that's why we introduced the following. So a t subset of sigma q, maybe of countable height, uh, maybe countable height. is, I'm going to say, strongly pruned. Strongly pruned. If these two things can be controlled simultaneously, in other words, for any S in T and for any delta above the, so what's this? Delta is going to be above the height of s less than the height of t, I can find a t from this level which extends s, but the difference between the supremum is arbitrarily small. So there's another quantifier here that for any whatever j or m, I can make this smaller than 1 over m. So for any s and for any delta, I can find a t such that uh, the t is on this level, it extends s, and let's say the difference between the supremum is less than 1 over 2. Then you can go one level higher, or well, whatever higher you want, find the next element, difference between the supremum is less than 1 over 4. Okay? Just go inductively higher and higher and higher. You can make sure that the, the total increase in the supremum is less than 1. Okay, so how to build uh, how to build an Einstein tree with this? Now, to build T, just an Einstein subtree, this. And define. Exactly. Yeah. No. 
So I'm, let's say, starting with uh, just the first level. T0 is just the empty set sequence, right? The root of the tree. We're making these end extensions, right? T less than alpha is uh, countable height alpha. And they're all strongly pruned. So if alpha, that's the only interesting case, if alpha is limit and uh, t less than alpha is constructed, first alpha many levels, then we define t alpha, let's say t less than alpha plus one, which is just t less than alpha unit t alpha as follows. So this is the tree that we have so far. Less than alpha, and we need to put the alphas level up here. Okay, we need countably many branches that are going to be sealed. such a way that this property is preserved. That for any starting point and an arbit for any given arbitrarily small distance, I can find so for any starting point and any small distance somebody gives you, you can find a t on the alphas level such that t extends s and the difference between the supremum is less than fixed value. Exactly. Yeah, this is the Aaron classical. Um, I think Aaron. Sh I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the history there. Um, why is it? I would guess Kunin, but uh, but maybe not. Maybe maybe that's yeah. I I don't know. Yeah. So there's a technical uh, detail of how I like to look at this because it's going to be useful later on. So how do you define these countably many points? You, you need a witness for any s and any small distance. Okay. So for any s in t less than alpha and any, let's say, j natural number, I'm going to look at a partial order p, s, j. This is going to be a set of finite chains in t less than alpha. So an element of this is going to be a chain, finite chain above s. such that the following holds. Um, what do I want from this? Um, soup of S and the soup of T, let's say less than one over J for any T in T. It's an approximation for that, that bound on the alphas level.
So what happens is that I'm gonna collect all these, these partial orders, take uh, their product, and take a sufficiently generic filter, which is gonna give me countably many chains through the tree, and I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna seal exactly those branches. I'm gonna introduce upper bounds, add the, the unions to the, uh, to the tree, and that's it. So note a sufficiently uh, generic G gives a branch. A final branch in this tree. Oh, wait, so this was, I can already call this T. And we add this to T alpha. Right, so I do this for all elements of the tree that I had so far for all natural numbers. And if I take a, a filter now here, the, the coordinates will give me all the branches. All the branches that I need to, to keep the tree strongly pruned. T equals Tsj is going to be in the end Jsj. I so I just wrote down what I said before that I take a product of these, and then the generic filter will give me exactly those countably many things that I need. There are easier ways to, to stay, say the same thing in this setting, but later it's going to be useful to look at things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one thing that you can avoid is taking that cofinal, you know, sequence in in alpha. Uh, you can avoid some bookkeeping and and yeah. There are way more complicated situations where this comes handy. That, that when you when you need to construct these simultaneously omega many things finite approximations then then, then this this might be easier to, to present and this this finishes the construction of the tree okay so this this is again this is just the classical specker or Arnstein or Kurepa or whoever did this this way at first yeah. I think the Sigma Q might be Sigma Q might be Kurepa, but I have no idea. Maybe Specker was the, the, the coherent sequence of, of one to one. I don't know. Yes, and extension, yes. So new elements, when, when T extends S, I don't know how, where I had that, when T extends S, uh, new elements of T are all above the elements of S. Yeah. All right, so this is the picture that S was here, and then this is T minus S. Okay, so the, the reason I wanted to go in this detail uh, is that, you know, now you see that strongly pruned allows you to, to extend a tree one level higher. Right, it just gives you uh, this this way of uh, constructing fusion sequences, in some sense. Now, when we're going to prove the theorem, theorem that stated that there is an Arnstein tree such that any coloring has a uniformization, you're going to be constructing uniformizations inductively inside the tree. In the end, we will construct uniformizations in some G 
tree. Okay. Right, so imagine that we already constructed this tree and then somebody gives you coloring and then you're building the uniformization again. You know, the, the argument's gonna look like this, presumably. <laughs> You're going to build this phi by induction. You need a way to continue not just the tree, but the, the coloring as well. Right? No matter what type of diamond you have, uh, it's not going to help you to, to guess the value at alpha. Right? You, you're going to see everything that happened before, but not the, the value at alpha. So we're going to have this uh, ladder here, and we're going to have some coloring, but you're, you're not going to have any information about the coloring. It's going to be some constant coloring. You're not going to have any information. So you need to be prepared to find branches through this partial uniformization, which agree with this coloring. Okay, so this, this, this is the, the main difficulty. No matter how you're building this tree, you need to be prepared to find branches <coughs> that take the right values on these levels. Okay, so remember, the, in the previous construction, the only difficulty was to keep the supremum below infinity. Now we have two things. We need to keep the supremum bounded. We need to keep the, the union bounded. But at these critical levels, at critical levels, of C alpha, we need to control, control the value of phi, phi along branches. Well, along, you know, we, we need to be able to construct branches such that the value of phi is uh, controlled. We need to control the value of phi along certain branches. Okay, so this was constructing phi. Think uniformization inductively. So I'm saying all this to motivate the following definition. A map H on a tree T is rich if for any S in T and any delta above height S and any uh, color n, there is an extension level called s less than t. Uh, the h color of t is exactly n, and I'm also controlling the supremum soup of s minus soup t is arbitrarily small. Okay, so that's a very important definition. So it's a slight extension of being uh, strongly pruned, right? You're, construct you're, you're controlling three things in the tree now. You're, it says that you have this coloring, you have this colored tree with the following property that if you pick an element S down here, you pick a higher level, you pick a small distance and you pick a color, then you can go up here without S and T being too far from each other and T having the right color. Yeah. 
Uh, sorry, can you say that again? So the idea is going to be that uh, you're going to prepare your tree that no matter what happens, no matter what color you're going to see at, at, at uh, the, the ZFC thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Essentially, what the, the ZFC theorem says that any coloring with this property is going to work. Almost. There's, there's something more technical to add there, but there's a relatively simple strengthening of this, which is going to work for the ZFC theorem. Yeah. By the way, Arnstein trees cannot have those master colorings. So for an Arnstein tree, you cannot have a single coloring that works for all letter system coloring. So, so we, we're not going to prove, uh, we cannot hope to prove something like that. Okay, so I'm erasing what strongly pruned is, but that's actually stronger. That. So I think this is going to be the next blackboard is going to be the most important in the whole lecture. And I'm just going to give you a high level overview of the proof. So still no details about the actual construction. I'm just giving you the, just giving you the, the plan. Okay, and if, if you understand that part, you're going to be able to reproduce the, the details yourself. And we're going to see how, how much time I'm going to have to the blackboard. Okay, so just to have it here, the goal still diamond plus implies for any C construct a T such that constant uniformization holds. So any monochromatic coloring has a uniformization. That's what we need from the tree. Okay, so the diamond plus is going to be witnessed by this W. So let's see, let's try to figure out how the proof would, would go. Okay, so given a coloring F, C, uh, sorry, maybe this is not how I start. Uh, so how the proof will go is that I have this diamond sequence, and I'm going to do something smart and construct a tree. So the first step is going to be construct T using W. Well, construct the alphas level using W alpha. This is going to be the first step. This is going to be obviously involves exactly. So that's a very good point. And C. Thank you. Exactly. So the ladder is fixed at this point, and that's very important. So we're not going to prove that it, that the tree is not going to work for all ladder systems. We we know that. So we're going to have this smart construction of this tree using the diamond and the fixed ladder. Okay. This is going to be whatever, two pages from the, the paper. This is how you imagine before you figure out anything. Uh, then you're going to take a coloring, arbitrary coloring. Right? As all diamond proofs go, you're going to guess the coloring. There is a club. D such that everything is guessed at D. So alpha in D implies that D intersect alpha F restricted to alpha. Even the diamond itself up to alpha is guessed at alpha. Even the previous elements from the diamond sequence is in this thing. You, you just guess the diamond itself. That's that's okay. 
and even the, the yeah the letters is coded anyway in the coloring so that's okay okay then again being smart you're gonna build phi the the uniformization build phi d Yeah, so what's going to happen is that you're going to construct this uniformization. Uh, where am I? Okay, so this is tree T, and you're going to be constructing this uniformization that was usually colored. So you're constructing this uniformization by some kind of an induction, right? An induction that uses the, the tree, the coloring, um, and uh, the diamond, okay? The thing is, I'm, I'm constructing it by these chunks that follow exactly this D, okay? Alpha zero, alpha one, alpha two, these are elements of D, okay? So we're constructing phi along D. Okay. There's, there's gonna be a res recipe for, for doing this, okay? If, if you were smart in the first step, I, I'm claiming now that you can, you can always you know, continue in these successor steps. Now what happens at limits? You, you just arrived at some whatever limit, you constructed these things so far, and you'd like to find the right top level. The thing is, when you were originally, when you were originally constructing the alpha's level of the tree, you had the diamond at alpha and the ladder system to work with. Now this particular thing, D being a club, is gonna be also in D, right? This union of the previous stages. So hidden in this countable collection, you see these things. You see many other things which look like these. You see many different sequences of colorings. You see other clubs up to alpha. You see other guessing type sequences. You don't know which are the real objects, but they're somewhere in there, right? So what you do, what, what you could have done at this stage is that you looked at all these possible candidates. There are only countably many of those. And you, you, you could have done the same procedure that we just did with phi so far. There was, a, there was a very exact recipe of, of building this phi. If I did that at stage alpha, and I made sure that these branches, that there are branches with top elements to close off these candidates, then I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna try to write something down from this. All the information to construct phi less than alpha is uh, t less than alpha, w less than alpha, d intersect alpha, um, and the coloring so far, which is all in w alpha. So we could have, when constructing T alpha, we could have looked at this, looked 
at all these candidates and again could have so maybe we did uh, introduce the uh, good branches. The branches where you exactly see the right color. Good branches with uh, right colors. So at the alphas level of the original, the large tree, you don't know which phi you're going to get in the end. But there, you only see countably many of those candidates. So you can deal with all of those. What the diamond doesn't tell you is the, the color of the, the letter system, the letter at alpha. OK, so one extra info to seal. Uh, is color at C alpha. So the, the, the diamond is not going to tell you that at alpha. And this is why we're only dealing with constant colorings. There are only countably many possible val values that could appear at alpha. Right? It's either constant 0 or constant 1 or constant 2 or constant 3 or whatever. There are only countably many uh, possibilities. Okay. So at step alpha, what we're going to do is I'm going to look at the diamond and the ladder system, see what first order definable partial uh, uniformizations I can cook up. There are only countably many of those. For each one, I can look at uh, the possible colors at C alpha. And for each of those, I'm going to introduce these branches so that at the right coordinates, I'm only seeing that constant whatever 1,000 or whatever constant value n I want to see. OK, so if you want to a bit. Uh, so for the constant value n, I'm going to introduce this, uh, this stop here. And uh, for another constant value, I'm going to add different branches where at the same positions, on these different branches, I'm going to see n plus 1, right? And n plus 2, n plus 4, whatever. So we have these different possibilities to seal the same, uh, the same partial uniformization. Right? And again, there, there's, at stage alpha, we're going to have countably many of these, uh, these partial trees to start with. And each countably many of those is going to get countably many of ceilings. And that's it. Color at alpha. The important thing here, only omega choices. Because only constant colorings. Considered. Right, there's nothing special, by the way, about the constant coloring. If you, you know, fix your favorite countably many reals, and, and you, you ask that the, all the colorings are those reals, come from those reals, that, that's OK, right?
Okay, and I was talking about this. This is the last thing about the uh, the, the high level overview. So I was talking about this algorithm or recipe or whatever to 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 build a partial uniformization given a coloring. And uh, this just means that whenever you have a freedom to choose something, or have a freedom to you know pick this branch or that branch or use a some color that is not specified by the parameters, then you make a canonical choice. Always choose the minimal color, always choose the minimal branch according to some fixed well order of the whatever large enough portion of the universe. That way, when uh, when you're constructing the tree and you're you're you know building these partial uniformizations, um, then you're you're going to get the same objects. Okay. Are there any questions about this? <clears throat> okay, so in the next 15 minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down actually some details about the, the proof. Okay, so the, we have diamond that's witnessed by the Ws. The construction is going to start very similarly to the, the usual orange shine tree construction. Construct t0, t1, less than 1 over t less than alpha, these initial segments for the tree. Sigma q. So these are countable, strongly. pruned subtrees of height alpha and I'm also going to make sure that this sequence of trees is uniquely definable from the diamond sequence up to alpha plus one and C from and extension. Um, yes, that uh, H alpha is going to collect all these partial uniformizations, all functions. H S omega, uh, which are such that S is some subtree, uh, strongly pruned subtree, and H is rich. Yep, we don't even need more. Uh, definable. Right? There still continue many of these, but there are only countably many which are definable. Uh, all functions h, and they are also h is definable from less than alpha plus one and c. Okay. And I was drawing those boxes. So those boxes are going to be the, the seals for a given function and a given color. Okay, so we're going to construct along the tree. We also construct, construct also ceiling function. I'm going to be really creative and call it SL. So SL assigns to each element of H alpha each natural number, so the spare, a countable subset of the alphas level. This is the ceiling function. And it 
I'm just going to write what we already talked about there. So any h, any natural number n, if I take the domain of h and I add these countably many points, so the ceiling of uh, h is the color n, then this is strongly pruned. Um, and the colors are right. So for any t in SL alpha hn, and for almost every xi, c alpha uh, h xi is the same as f alpha xi. So the same picture as before. You have this coloring h here and you're adding some top elements. Okay, so that along each branch determined by points here, at the, the critical coordinates, you only see this, this fixed value. In other words, if the future coloring at uh, alpha is going to be constant n, I'm going to choose this way. I'm going to go this way in the tree. If it's n plus 1, I'm going to go the other way. And that's it. Uh, yes, this, this guy also wants to be uh, definable. Everything, everything is very much definable from these things. So this is what I want from the construction. Construct the trees along with these ceiling functions. Ceiling functions, what, what do they do? They, they take all definable partial uniformizations, all possible colors, and they add countably many elements. In this case, you know, once you have the ceiling functions, the uh, what am I saying? Uh, yeah, they, you know, the the alpha level is just the image of uh, the the range of these ceiling functions. Yes. Uh, are there any questions with with these these properties? Right, so so I, I need to do two things. I, I need to show that uh, you can do this, that, that this construction goes through. And we need to see that you actually get a tree with the, the desired properties, right? I mean, it, it's sort of, you know, some people would say that the, you already saw that, but yeah. So let's see, yeah, let's say a few words about the construction. So again, um, everything is preserved if you, you know, take unions at limit steps and uh, extending uh, you know, from a successor level to the next is also uh, trivial, okay? So, well, trivial, so easy once you, once you get used to all the notation and the, the, the whole problem. So let's assume that alpha is limit um, and p less than alpha constructed and what do I do? Uh, so I'm just going to look at the, the, the relevant partial orders, right? So what do I need? I need that for any H, for any color, I, I need the set of branches, okay? So for any H, for any uh, N, I need the set of branches uh, such that the extension with these branches is strongly pruned. So strongly pruned means that for any point and arbitrary small distance, there is an extension up there. For any S and any small distance, you know, J, one over J is the small distance, you have a good branch. So the good branch is going to be introduced by a partial order indexed by these four things. 
J poset forcing B right branch. Okay, so it's going to be the, the same post set. It's going to be a set of uh, finite chains about S inside this, inside the domain of H, uh, with the property that the supremums are bounded uh, by 1 over J from, from the supremum of S. Okay, so P is in here. S H N S J if P subset dom H chain finite chain above S um, T and P implies that uh, the supremums are not far. Um, less than 1 over j, and that I am at the right position. I'm, I, I assume the right color at the right position. So for any xi in C alpha, if xi is bigger than the height of s, then if I look at t restricted xi, then the h color is exactly n. So these two things, All right? So this is an approximation for an element of uh, SLHN. So G subset P H N S J generic, well, sufficiently generic. Um, gives an element of S L alpha H N. So when you take the product for all S and J, and fix H and N, the sufficiently generic for the product will give you this whole thing. And this is where this uh, uh, if you, so if you fix all, uh, sorry, if you fix H and N and this S and J vary, so all elements of DOM H and all J natural numbers, so those are the small distances, then you get everything. And this is where this generic uh, filter thing comes handy. That now I can say that I have this fixed well ordering of the universe, large enough portion of the universe, I take this product, which is very much definable from the parameters, and now I take the minimal filter a given set of dense sets, right? Because otherwise, I, I mean, it, it, it would get really, yeah. I'm not sure what would be the, the, the right way to avoid, to avoid this. Yeah. I mean, you would describe the same procedure of inductively building these branches and always choosing the minimal element which satisfied these properties. Yeah. yeah. So this, uh, so let me write this down at least once. Take uh, minimal generic G in the product of all these. Minimal with respect to some well ordering. There's some well order. And now, <laughs> uh, this is when people say large enough theta that I hate, um, but I also don't want to calculate how high this is. Uh, this is a subset of some kind of. Uh, 
right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The, the important thing is that you're making canonical choice. Like this was the point that, that uh, disturbed you. That to to make to keep this definable. So if, if you have a yeah this right I'm I'm glossing over the fact that definable from these and the fixed value order of. Yeah. Anyways, that gives you the the ceiling. This defines S L alpha H N. For every H and for every M. And you just collect all the all the branches that turn up in these SL things, and that's gonna be the alpha subtle. So just countably many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't have diamond, you have you have continuum many things to consider. But if you're allowing con continuum size levels, you can still continue. So that's why we have a ZFC result too. That you can build a very similar tree in ZFC if you allow continuum size levels, because the only thing that you do the same diagonalization argument in ZFC. And you're considering all the possible partial colorings, not just the ones definable from diamond, you don't have diamond, but all the possible colorings. And that's why you, you sometimes have these, these corresponding ZFC results uh, to the consistency results, right? I mean, the same proof works, you just need more space. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the end of the construction of the tree. This uh, and the tree construction. Smiley face. And, uh, and the last thing to check that this is actually the tree that you, you wanted. And that's, that's again fairly straightforward now, right? You, somebody hands you Y is this, uh, the tree we were looking for, the right tree. Fortunately, I don't have that part of the, the outline here. Um, so you, you take the coloring, given F, you guess on club D, you do what I what I explained there. You you enumerate D of xi xi less than omega one. This is the increasing enumeration, and you construct this sequence of colorings, sequence of maps h xi from s less than alpha xi to omega partial definable. Uh, uniformization and as long as you keep it definable and you're you're sticking to these stages these partial uniformizations are going to turn up in these H sets so what you do is that you have H psi you extend it to whatever H bar psi on uh, so this is on the domain of H psi union the ceiling. Uh, it would be wonderful to have space to write this formula down. Domain of H psi union ceiling H psi, and then you plug in whatever F that took at there. 
So this is going to be the slightly larger domain. H can be extended, the, the coloring can be extended to, to still stay uh, rich. And then you can, it's an easy argument that uh, the next countably many levels can be taken care of. So what I'm saying that from alpha psi, you can go up to alpha psi plus one, right? You're working along this club, you have these countable intervals that you need to go through. The, the ceiling functions help you at alpha psi, but between that, you can essentially do whatever you want. The only thing is you should uh, you should choose you know those partial uniformizations canonically. I know this this last part was was rushed, but I don't want to take up more time. So thank you very much. Things which are definable from the, the, the diamond sequence up to alpha and from the ladder up to alpha. Yeah, but definable in the structure H theta. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then to get the next count, next level, yeah. Yeah. And then you want whatever choices you made at, at, at that stage in the construction mm -hmm. to also be definable within H theta. Yeah. So it looks like you want to be able to refer to what's true in H theta from within H I mean, the office level is going to be generic over a, a countable elementary submodel. But, um, sure yeah. I mean, these are just yeah, subsets. But these are just subsets of, uh, you know, the, this whatever sigma q. It's, uh, can you say that again? That what 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 what's? This might be a totally dumb question, but like you know, Tarski's mm -hmm. uh, theorem that you can't define truth within uh, H and X uh, structure. Um, so it's like you can't work. If I lived in H theta, I can't say let's look at all the things that are definable from these parameters because that that requires. <coughs> Knowing what satisfaction is from within. If you pick the leading level, so you say sigma n is finable. Okay, maybe that's. And then you join up the parameters. You have a universal sigma n character. Okay. Then I think you say. <laughs> I mean, Tarski is talking about dialogue with the leading level. So mm -hmm. There's no sigma n in fact, there's sigma n somewhere. And then you got a universal sigma n predicate, so you can go in. Um, I mean, just with the argument that that I have this, you know, well-defined countable set of uh, this just a countable subset of whatever h theta, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a, a countable set of, you know elements from sigma q with certain properties that I, I set here, with the, the, the ceiling properties. So I can take a minimal such countable subset of h2 to the whatever, h theta. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, as long as you can do it where you can remove all uses of definable from mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. yeah, I see. No, I, I, I agree that, that I'm glossing over some details there, which should be cleared up. Yeah, 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 yeah. thanks. I have a completely different question. This may be stupid. So in sigma q, the sequences are increasing. The, yes, yeah, the, the, the usual order well orders them, yeah. yeah. But you still have a tree. I mean, if you look at 
just bunch of injections mm -hmm. from trauma ordinals into Q. Yeah. And the hip also has increasing, that. countable increase. No, no, no. no, just any yeah. okay, yeah. It's still no alpha in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. How different is that? Yeah. Is it is that a very different tree? Yeah, I I mean I realize you want them to be increasing yeah. it's used in your yeah. arguments, but there's also a tree where you don't demand that, just inject this. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that's a different tree. Mm. That is different because that's just the, the coherent that, oh. yeah. So in that tree, what you describe, it, it doesn't matter what the, the range is. It, it could be any countable set. So you're just saying that injections of, let's say, alpha to omega, right? And then you can construct suicide trees even that are formed by such uh, functions. And there are no Susan subtrees of um, sigma q, so that that is different. That that is different. Of Susan trees. Of con consisting of the injections from countable ordinals to to whatever countable set you fixed. Oh. Is it, is it distinct from time changing? And look in a bowl and this one comes with the newness of its. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Stevo has this paper in the Handbook of Set Theoretic Topology on Trees and Linear Orders, mm -hmm. and he he looks at the sigma operation for any yeah. any partial order. You can look at these well-ordered chains of sub and then. Find the way you define. Yeah. 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 And there are these general properties, and I think Kurepa started this study. Yeah. So what I'm saying is much. It, it sounds like it emits a lot, yeah, a lot more than, than sigma q. So yeah, there are good problems in the the, the preprint. There are, you know, I said this stationary anti-chain. I, I didn't look at the Kurepa trees at all, which would be interesting to see the the same uniformization problem in Kurepa trees. Um, the, the same, even, even for omega-1 uniformizations, try to get a ladder system such that any constant omega coloring can be uniformized, but there's a two coloring without uniformization. I, I haven't seen that anywhere. So in terms of applications, Shalom invented this because of the whitehead? Yeah, he was, he was looking to, to characterize, you know, what's the combinatorics behind the, the whitehead problem. So are there other applications? People like this in, in topology because the, the, there's a space defined or correspond, natural space corresponding to ladders, ladder systems. And the, the uniformization property corresponds to normality of the space. Mm -hmm. The constant uniformization corresponds to normality of the space. Um, and so that's why it was, was important to look at these. You get these non-metrizable more spaces and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And the, the, the linear orders, the, the classification of minimal uncountable linear orders, right. that's another other place where it was really important. And then the forcing axioms. So that's the last one, the forcing axioms with CH. Mm -hmm. That's the big, big obstacle to, to, for having uh, a good forcing axiom that's consistent with CH. And that summarizing note, we thank you very much. Thank you.